Hello, my name is Brian Jones and I'm a software engineer on the JavaScript runtime for Zephyr OS project, or ZJS for short. JavaScript is one of the most widely used programming languages today, and now ZJS allows you to use JavaScript on embedded IoT devices. Our web IDE runs on a web browser without any plugins, so all you'll need to get started is a ZJS powered board, a USB cable, and a web browser. In this video, we're going to show you how to use ZGS together with the Web IDE to explore IoT development using an Arduino 101 board, which is an Intel x86 based platform. We'll start by showing you how to set up the Arduino 101 and get it connected to the Web IDE. You'll find a companion document for this video with additional details on the ZGS GitHub site. Let's get started. The ZGS development environment uses your Mac or Linux host computer, the Arduino 101 board, and a USB A-B cable for communication. The cable also provides power to the board, so you won't need a separate power supply until you get into more complicated uses with additional devices that need more power. The Arduino 101 board needs to be initially prepared for use with the ZGS environment. While you can download the source code and build these images on your own, we've also packaged them as pre-built files ready to download and flash onto the board. Following the link that you will see at the end of the video, you can find this page where you can download the two images that you will need for your Arduino 101. There'll be one image for each of the two cores located on the Arduino 101. Make sure and download both of these files. There are two processes on the Arduino 101 board, so we'll need to flash two images on your Linux host computer, download the latest x86 and Arc ZGS binaries off our GitHub page. Next, you'll plug in the USB cable to the Arduino 101, connect it to your Linux host computer, and flash these images to the board. Before running the dfu util command, reset the Arduino 101 board by either unplugging and plugging the USB cable or pressing the master reset button. The board enters a special state for five seconds where it can be flashed. If you get an error from DFU Util saying it can't find a device to flash, press the reset button and try running DFU Util again. You'll see a progress bar indicating that data is being written to the board. Remember that you need to flash both the ARC image and the x86 image in order for this to work. If you're using a Mac as your host, you're ready to go. If you're running Linux on your host system, you'll need to add a rules file to allow Web IDE to access your device. You can see the Zephyr project page for information on how to do this. And now, with all that, you're ready to use the Web IDE for ZGS. The ZGS Web IDE runs on your host computer in a Chrome web browser. Open a Chrome browser, version 57 or later. The Chrome browser needs to be running before you plug in the board for it to be detected. Connect or reset your Arduino 101 board, and in a few seconds, a pop-up will display. Click on this box, and Chrome will open the ZGS Web IDE page for you. This is the landing page for the JS IDE for Zephyr OS. Go ahead and click on the Let's Get Started button. The IDE is separated into three different windows. You have your editor on the left. In the top right, we have a board viewer where you can explore the pens on your Arduino 101 board. And in the bottom right, you have the console, which is going to show you output from your Arduino 101. You can use the mouse to change the size of any of these windows to your liking. In order to connect to the board, click the Connect button, and you'll see a pop-up appear. Select your device from the list and hit Connect. You should see text pop up in the console window indicating that you are now talking to your Arduino 101 device. Now that we have our device connected, let's go ahead and run one of the examples. Click on the Example tab and select Blink. Now that you have the code loaded in your editor, go ahead and hit Run and it will transfer it to the device. You should now see the red LED on the Arduino 101 blinking. Now for fun, let's go ahead and run it again except with some slight alteration. Let's change the time from one second over to 250 milliseconds. If we hit run again, it will quickly reload it onto your board, and now you'll see the light is blinking faster. This is a good demonstration of how fast you can quickly change your JavaScript and load it onto your board. Okay, now for something a little more interesting. I have here a board I've wired up with five different items, a temperature sensor, an RGB LED, a buzzer, a laser emitter, and a button. The wiring diagram can be found on the tutorial wiki. 
Let's go ahead and start by reading from the temperature sensor. This is the code that we'll need in order to read from the temperature sensor. So we have to include AIO, the Arduino pens, and then go ahead and make an object for our temperature. If we go ahead and hit run, we should see using the set interval that we're going to keep reading from our sensor at a rate of once per second. If I put my hands on the sensor, you'll see the temperature goes up. Okay, so now let's add the button to the mix. We'll need to add GPIO as well as create a, a button object using GPIO open. Now instead of using a set interval, let's go ahead and use the button on change event in order to read from the temperature sensor. Once we have that, we can hit run and move the code over to our device. Now pressing the button will show the temperature inside of the console. All right, next up, let's go ahead and add the LED to the mix. To do this, let's go ahead and include PWM as well as three different objects for each of the LEDs, red, green, and blue. I've also created a function called setColor, which will allow us to set the color using variables between 0 and 255. Now that we have our new function, let's go ahead and change the button event to use our setColor function. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and transfer it to the board. And now, when we press the button, you will see the light light up bright green. If you don't like green, you can make it blue instead. Just change the number, transfer the code, and now when you press the button, the LED will glow blue. Now let's change our button on change event to use our blink function. We're going to blink the blue LED for two seconds. Hit run, and now once it's transferred, pressing the button should make the LED blink for two seconds. Now let's add our last two items, the buzzer and the laser. We'll go ahead and insert them below our button and our temperature sensor and create a function called set high. This will allow us to turn each of these items on. Now that we have this function, Let's go ahead and change it so that button sets both of them off. Once transferred over, pressing the button will set off the laser and the buzzer for exactly one second. And now for a last bit of fun, let's put all these pieces together. Pressing the button will give a warning the laser is going to fire for one second. It then fires the laser and finally turns the light green indicating that it's done. I hope you've enjoyed a quick look around this ZJS environment that makes it easy to experiment and learn about IoT development with JavaScript on Zephyr. Its simple edit and run web-based interface eliminates much of the complexity found in traditional native development flow and gets you developing and exploring quickly. We continue to develop and improve the ZJS web IDE and we'll be adding additional examples to the IDE library. Since it's a web application, you'll automatically get access to the latest release when you access the Web IDE application web page. For more information about the ZGS Web IDE and the Zephyr OS, please visit these websites, explore the documentation, and give the ZGS Web IDE a try on your own. Thank you for joining us.